In our prior video, we showed you how to waterproof a shower bench using Weedy. We also showed you how to install the Weedy Fundo Primo shower pan. In today's video, we're gonna complete our Weedy Fundo Primo shower kit installation, and we're gonna show you how to waterproof the walls and install a custom shower niche using the Weedy building panels. All right, so we'll go ahead and put this back panel in, and I'm just gonna set it in place and then just kinda of put a mark at the edge of my bench here. And I'm gonna just measure up from that dado. Make sure this your tape measure slides down into the dado. So we've got 19 and a half, or yeah, 19 and a half. 12 and 5. Just clean your joint, make sure you don't have any loose insulation in there or any debris and then just fill that whole thing with the weedy coal. So on this back side, I mean, I would say you're you're going to almost use an entire tube to fill this. So, but this is the most critical part of the system is getting these corners of the shower. So you definitely want to be generous with the caulking in this area. And we'll go ahead and do our corner. And all the way up along the bench. down into the data well and at this point I'm gonna keep my first one down about eight or ten inches and then you also want to just be again four inches away from the bottom but we're gonna just save some washers and, and pinch two of these panels together four inches above and then we put some blocking as you remember in this corner and it's important to have that uh, secures the edge and again, like you know, this is just a above the bench. I'm still going to keep this up about four inches. So this is going to be kind of a little bit of a common thing that you'll have. Not when, not if you're keeping the panel the same, but if you're notching out and cutting this pan down, you might end up having a little bit of an overcut for your dado like I did here. Uh, it's not a big deal. W once we go to our final pl application of the of the sealant, we'll just fill that whole groove in there. So you might not be 100% accurate when you recreate the dado. Like the factory edge type fits pretty nicely, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm about a good saw blade, a good eighth of an inch off. So I'm just gonna fill that and we'll fill the corner. So we're gonna create a niche in the corner here, but we, instead of having it, having this weird bump out with our end stud here, we're gonna actually cut this out so that our wall panels go flush into the side of the corner of the niche. So basically creating a corner niche. So I'm just gonna cut out the area that I want my niche. And I figured we're gonna make a, about a 16 inch uh, niche. So I'm gonna start out with the bottom part. I'm just gonna use my oscillating tool and I want to be careful not to cut the drywall on the other side because there's a closet and I don't want to have to do any additional drywall work. So, Okay, since I want it to be 16 inches on the inside dimension, I'm going to add 3 inches for my top and bottom plate plus an inch for my weedy board. And I'm just going to add actually another inch for my tile. It's not going to be a full inch, but I'd rather have a little bit of wiggle room and keep that 16 in there. So my total overall size will be 21 inches. I'm going to be cutting from bottom to top here. Make sure this is sitting straight. And you also want to make sure that this is sloping into the shower. So if you have to, you can put a shim in the back here and, and create that, but it's nice to have the, the wood blocking actually slope into the shower. It makes, er makes everything else go in more easily. We're putting in wood blocking here. This is just standard two by fours. You can use two by six, two by eight, whatever. And we're using common deck screws to secure them to these studs. The reason for the blocking is for grab bars. We do the caulking on top of this bottom sheet here. And then we'll be able to pinch both sheets together here. And again, I'm gonna keep this down about eight inches. I can pinch those two sheets as well.
two and a half. So make sure that sits in the dado and then you can just puncture against your mixing valve of where that location is and that'll give you a center mark. Kind of trace this guy around here. one-inch spade bit cut that out then your next one and this guy I just have a two and a quarter but you can cut this out with a utility knife obviously but um, I have a two and a quarter hole saw bit and it'll cut out just clean out that dado joint this out about 17 and a half okay so I would uh, recommend if you're doing this if you're custom making a niche to put the bottom sill plate down first finish the side so we got basically 10 inches so we'll cut it off a square inch here 10 inches Okay, then seal at the bottom part of the weed here. Just make sure it's still sitting level and then it tilt it down. And actually might be a little. Put the back portion in. This is like nine and three quarter, seventeen. So I'm actually just going to use up the rest of this stent. You can use it again. You can either use sealant against the drywall, or just to use some thin set like I'm doing here. Get a good amount of sealant against this bottom plate. Okay, then make sure you seal against the weeding bottom sill. And I can't really get in this corner, so I'm just gonna go against my one edge here. Steve is using a scrap piece of 2x4 here to pound that little piece of weedy building panel into the 2x4s. Then he's using two screws and two washers to attach it. Now, here's the thing. Always make sure you apply a copious amount of weedy joint sealant in a custom shower niche like the one that we're building. amount on this bench we're gonna slide the panel into
Okay, I'm not gonna go all the way down to the corner. I'm just gonna hold that last one up. So now is the time to apply a generous bead of the weedy joint sealant to all of the seams. So all the vertical seams, as you can see here, Steve is using the corner, the corner putty knife, and that really comes in handy with the corner seams, and applying a lot of weedy joint sealant to that custom shower niche. Again, that's really, really important to keep everything nice and waterproof, and then applying weedy joint sealant to all the screws and washers. So... Again, you want plenty of weedy joint sealant in between all of the seams, especially at a vertical bench, or I'm sorry, a horizontal plane for a bench. Uh, that's very, very important. And then again, we're just smoothing out the joint sealant so that it doesn't affect our tile. You can see here how there's plenty of joint sealant on all the seams in the custom niche. And then we applied a lot of joint sealant on all the screws and washers and horizontal seams. It's very easy to use the joint sealant. You just go from one screw washer combination to the next and from one horizontal seam to the next. And it's easy to smooth out with either a putty knife, a three inch putty knife, or that corner putty knife. Uh, you'll probably want both of those for a shower system like this. Again, make sure where the curb meets the bench or a side panel that that's completely waterproof. And then it never hurts to apply a lot of weedy joint sealant between the curb and the shower pan and between vertical building panels in the shower pan. These are areas that could be uh, adversely affected by water. So always make sure that they're completely waterproof using the joint sealant. So this is one thing that's different than most other pans is that if you get a little puncture like this, you really don't have to worry too much about it because this pan is an inch and a half thick. Uh, this was actually just from one of those washers. I stepped on it and kind of created a little panel. But you can just fill this in with the sealant uh, and not worry about it. But I would say this is one of the real great benefits of using the Wii system is because if you puncture this, as long as it doesn't go all the way through the pan, I mean, you're still waterproof and you don't have anything to worry about. Whereas a lot of those other pans where it's a sheet membrane, you'll have a major issue if you did a puncture like that. So even like this little divot here, I must have dropped, I dropped something there. So I'm just gonna fill in that little hole and we're good to go. So if you wanted to, uh, and you're worried about waterproofing this area, because if you remember, we kept this corner because we didn't want to damage it and have to do all this finishing on the outside of it. But if you wanted to, you could just use a, the sealant and go over this whole corner. It really is not gonna matter because if you remember, we're gonna have that shower door coming, you know, approximately three inches away from that corner. So technically it's really not gonna be in the wet area outside of here. But if you had some extra sealant and you were concerned about it, it's really not a bad idea. Fill that in and just seal over this so then the whole area is waterproof. And then the same thing as far as the ceiling, if you really wanted to seal up against there, you could, but there's really not gonna be, you know, you'll be putting tile and then you'll end up doing a caulk joint against the tile. You know, I mean, if you're getting water way up there, you really should have considered getting Keep doing the whole ceiling with tile as well, uh, or at least in the shower area. But normally that's not really much of a concern because it's really kind of out of the, the wet area. Okay, and then all the kits come with this little excussion rubber plate that you would basically thin set into place. And this is just like a lot of extra, I mean, this is, gives you a lot of extra protection because if water ever got behind here, you have this big rubber gasket essentially that's gonna keep the water from going inside the wall. So this comes with every kit. You can do this during the tiling process or you can install it as you're installing the weedy kit, but you basically just use a thin set to set this in place. And then you take it, just make it as flat as possible.
trunk and then they also have these little guys which is really nice for something like this for the shower port because this is definitely an area if that you didn't silicone around the port for the handheld this really makes a nice seal on that So if you bought the shower kit and then you have an additional valve like this is the, the change it from shower head to handheld, they don't really sell another flange like this for something smaller like that. So what you want to do on this is just literally right around the edge, just basically create a bead of sealant, just enough to raise it outside of the weedy board and then let that dry and then you'll tile up against that. So when you're really just trying to create your own little bead so if water ever got behind which it will eventually once tile gets behind the or water gets behind the tile then that water can run down and go outside of this hole so just try to make it as close to that valve as you can that would be the same thing you want to do for the shower head if you didn't buy a, an additional uh, flange for it. So I'm kind of making a mess here for it, but you just really want to... It's more important on the top than it is on the bottom. Using the Weedy Fundo Primo shower kit is very easy and straightforward. If you are in fact doing a master bathroom remodel and you want our help, check out the Bathroom Repair Tutor course. You can go right here to check that out. That's where we assist our members one-on-one, -on -one, and you get all of our video tutorials in one spot. It's awesome, especially if you've never done a master bathroom remodel and you want extra help with it. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching today's video, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.